Today I want to show you a book that's full of beautiful autumn projects made with wool applique. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts and today we're taking a look at Harvest Garden, Stitch and Enjoy Autumn's Treasures by Kathy Cardiff and it's published by Martingale Publishing. So this book, as I mentioned before, is full of autumn or you might say fall projects and so they're not huge. It's not like we're making big lap quilts or queen size quilts because if you made them out of wool, they'd be a little heavy probably. So these are smaller projects made with wool applique on cotton backgrounds and there's sometimes a little bit of hand embroidery details in them. So let's jump into the book and see what we've got. So the first project in here is called Changing Seasons and I loved this project right off the hop. Great one to start the book off with I thought because of the beautiful colors in the zinnias and the thistles and right away when I saw these flowers I went zinnias. So good job Kathy, <laughs> right? But I just thought it was really beautiful. It's in this uh, flower container. I imagine that's some kind of a ceramic or you know those big heavy containers that you would have flour in back in the days, those kind of crocks, right? If you didn't like the word flour on it, you could just, you know, leave it off and it'd still be very effective. So I just thought that the all the petals in here, these individual petals put together, were just really beautiful and added to the three-dimensional look of this project because I really find that when you have wool applique and you have some hand embroidery on it, and it's on a cotton background, that wool applique really sticks out and gives that three-dimensional look. So it's it's just really effective. I just love that look, that texture in it, right? So you can see a close-up here. Um, you can see the hand stitching around the petals and in the center. Now, if you didn't want to do the hand stitching around the petals, you could certainly do that on your machine. You probably got a blanket stitch or even a little zigzag stitch would work on that for that purpose. And here's just another shot of it. So you can see the beautiful uh, flowers in there and you can see probably what was her inspiration for this particular uh, project and gee whiz I actually have that mug it's from Ikea <laughs> I had noticed that before I have that in my kitchen actually with flowers in it <laughs> The next project that I really liked was called a, sim a single stem and it's very similar in that it's got the zinnia but it's just one this time. So you could call this like it's a little pillow. It's only nine and a half inches by 24 so it's not huge. I mean it's longer than it is wide, right? Higher than it is wide, however you want to say that. But what's interesting about this is a couple things. First off, the center is actually buttons, little buttons, and the way she's sewn them on, you've got these thread tails sticking out, so that's kind of an interesting effect. And also, both the front and the back um, fabrics are wool, and she's actually stitched them inside and then frayed the edges. So again, some more texture, just some more interest to that project. Okay, so here's a little close-up. You can see a little bit better here of those buttons. At first, I couldn't figure out what they were, right? They look like seeds, right? Because they're little tiny buttons, and with the thread sticking out like that, it really looks like seeds. It just adds so much to that effect. And anytime I look at projects in books, especially applique designs, I'm always looking for what else can I do with this project because I tend to color outside the lines sometimes. And when I looked at this particular project, I could see doing these zinnias in different colors and different heights, you know, make the stems uh, shorter and have different uh, leaves if you wanted. I mean, you could just cut them a little bit wider or, you know, jagged edges, whatever. But you could have like a really nice wall hang or table runner just by, you know, kind of repeating that motif several times across your project. So I like that. There's not only wall hangs, table runners, that those types of projects in here, but also some very useful projects as far as quilting or stitching. And On the Road Again contains a pouch and a pin cushion and somewhere to hold your scissors and needles. So again, wool applique on this. Some are wool background in these ones. Uh, some are just cotton or a linen type. The pin cushion is actually linen and you can see the hand embroidery stitches. So not very much in the hand embroidery side of things. And again, they are simple stitches. So that's always nice. So you can do it or you could use your sewing machine too, right? Now, what would a book full of autumn projects be without a few pumpkins and gourds? Well, that's what you have in family gatherings. So in this particular one, you can see this nice wall hang. You could perhaps use it as a table runner if you wanted to, although I think it's too pretty for that. What's interesting about this, couple things. First off, I notice how some of the appliques, the ones at the top here, actually go off into the border. That's always a really interesting idea. So if you haven't thought about that and you're doing appliques, think about that. You have to put the border on first and then you can have your appliques kind of spread out over them. It's really kind of a cool effect. And sometimes I think people look at it and go, how did that happen? But anyway, <laughs> it's not that hard to do, right? Uh, the other thing that's interesting about here is all these little uh, kind of 
button, they look like buttons, they're not buttons, little circles, little, I don't know what they're supposed to be, seeds or something maybe, uh, on here that she has on, on uh, this project. So you've got all these little um, details here, here, all around the project in amongst the kind of the vines that are happening there. I also really liked the half square triangle border, okay? Half square triangles are just so versatile. You can do so many different things with them. In this case, she's put them in the borders and they just are really effective in this project because you have a fairly simple background and then a solid border and then you've got the half square triangles to finish it off. So if you're making something like this, it's a good opportunity to, you know, perfect your half square triangle method as well as making a really lovely border. Now here she has a few of my favorite things and the first one here is called Sweet Chickadee. Okay, so, you know, wool just works so well for these 3D projects. You can make this little pin cushion if you want to. I think it's just too cute and it would be very nice to just be a shelf sitter in your studio just sitting there. He's just a little guy. He's only five and a half by three by two and a half inches. So he's not very big. You could tuck him into all kinds of little places, especially cute in a little nest like that. Also, there is a stuffed pear. This is interesting because you've got the seams on the outside. Again, more texture, more dimension. And also, there is this, she calls this welcome because a pineapple symbolizes welcome. So a, th a 3D stuffed pineapple. Sounds weird, doesn't it? But anyway, again, notice the different, the interest here with the leaves coming up at the top. And then by putting these different little squares, you can see here how she's doing this, putting these little accents with little buttons on them, she calls them accents. They are wool applique on the body of the pineapple, just adds that extra interest and of course makes it look more pineapple-ish. Yes, that is a new word. Okay, another one here, honeysuckle vine. This is a 29 and 7 eighths by 25 inch kind of a table topper really. And this one's quite interesting too, because you've got some of the applique details here, but then you've got some of these little tumblers in the center, as you can see here. So they're very small, not very big at all, but really adds a lot of interest. These are quite, quite muted, but it suits the rest of the fabrics. And I think you've got the fabric in the uh, border here is actually in some of these little tumblers as well. So very cute with the little uh, lilies going around the outside. This particular one uh, has the hand applique on the, or hand, sorry, hand embroidery on the flowers, but again, you could use your sewing machine to do that. And I thought this was really pretty as well. I have to go back to see what it's called here. Let the sunshine in. So the sunflowers here in that, I'm sure that's that Ikea jug, right? <laughs> that's what it looks like, different color in the gray. But a nice pillow could also be a wall hang, could also put it in a frame, right? Again, versatile. Now at the back of the book, there's also lots of information on working with wool, different options, how to even felt it, and even how to store wool, which is something that, you know, depending on the climate you live in, you may need to be really careful about that so that you don't get any little bugs in there wanting to eat at the, the wool or any um, moss in there, that type of thing. She also shows you how to put fusible web, this, these are all done with fusible web, and she tells you how to make the most of your wool because we know wool is expensive. You don't want to be wasting it. So she gives you tips on how to place those applique pieces on the wool for the best uh, results and to use up the least amount of wool. And then here you can see how she's made these, these zinnias, right? And she talks about building them on parchment paper. I love this technique. So when you have a multi-piece applique, you can build it first on parchment paper, then just peel it off and you've got a whole unit to place on the background, much easier for placement than trying to put, as you can imagine, all these little petals together in a nice way. She also talks about something that I haven't heard before and that's using glide press and seal when you're doing the hand embroidery. So you could actually trace your design on the glide press and seal, put it on your wool, stitch through it, tear it off afterwards. That was a new concept for me and I could see how well it would work on especially dark fabrics where you don't have a marker that's light enough to, you know, to, to mark on the wool and you find it really hard to see what you're supposed to be stitching. This would be a great technique for that. And of course she tells you how to do the different app, uh, I keep saying applique, but <laughs> the different hand embroidery stitches. Okay. She shows you how to do the applique, but explains how to do the hand embroidery stitches. So if you're looking for some fall projects and you want to do a little bit of hand embroidery with wool applique, I would advise you to check out Harvest Garden from Kathy Cardiff. And if you look above or in the description below, I've put a link to this particular book so you could get your own copy. 
Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, be sure to check out my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.